happy. What's success for you in this campaign? What's success? Um, what a win is one. One is the That's goal. That's not going to happen. Don Luskin, who's your pro stock market candidate? I mean this in all seriousness, Larry. Ron Paul. Before we go, you can go online and rate the candidates' performances in tonight's debate. Just go to politics.msnbc.com. So far, we've received nearly 2,000 votes. The highest rated candidate at the moment, Ron Paul with 39%. Uh, texting your votes. Who do you think was the winner of tonight's debate? Just text your vote to 36988. By the way, here's a look at the uh, early results of our text message poll. First place, Ron Paul, surprisingly, 33 for 30%. But I got to tell you, I have never seen so many viewer emails urging us to get a candidate on our air as I have with this particular gentleman. Our mailbox is consistently flooded with these reports. Uh, I uh, am Vice President of uh, Global Communications and Public Affairs here at Google. I have a couple of announcements as we get started. I know we're pretty full, indeed overflowing here. I'm, I'm pleased to say, or I'm impressed to say, that we've never gotten so many questions uh, on our uh, Dory system for a presidential candidate who has visited Google. Clinton, Barack Obama, Rudy Giuliani, McCain, four candidates in the race for the Oval Office, but when it comes to raising campaign cash, guess who is hitting a home run with the military? Michael Barone is a senior writer for U.S. News and World Report and also our Fox News political analyst. And I've got to tell you, they gave me five guesses. That's really nice graphic there. You decide, oh, wait. Uh, they gave me five guesses and I couldn't get it. So who does the military love? Uh, well, according to a website that's researched it, the number one fundraiser from military uh, personnel Congressman Ron Paul of the 14th Congressional District of Texas. That is right outside Austin, Texas. Between uh, Austin and Houston. Yeah, very, very interesting. How is Ron Paul's number so high? We've had so many emailers say that clearly uh, some online communities are messing Absolutely. with the, uh, the outcome. We have lived as if in a trance. We have lived as people in fear. And now, our rights and our freedoms in peril, we slowly awaken to learn that we have been afraid of the wrong thing. Therefore, tonight have we truly become the inheritors of our American legacy. For on this first full day that the Military Commissions Act is in force, we now face what our ancestors faced at other times of exaggerated crisis and melodramatic fear-mongering, a government more dangerous to our liberty than is the enemy it claims to protect us from. Listen to this. Over the weekend, before leaving town for a month-long vacation, the democratically controlled Congress handed President Bush exactly what he wanted, more than he asked for even. Legislation that broadly expands the administration's power to eavesdrop without warrants on Americans' international phone calls and emails. It was a speech Mrs. Clinton gave in Iowa last week in which she told the crowd that she would keep American troops in Iraq because, quote, we cannot lose sight of our very real strategic national interests in this region. And yet at the same time, our campaign put out a press release boasting that, quote, Hillary Clinton announced her plan to end the war in Iraq and urged President Bush to act immediately. And they can't both be true. If we have actionable intelligence about high-value terrorist targets and President Musharraf will not act, we will. We need a hybrid army. We need to look at nation building as part of what we have to teach our military. In two nights, you're going to have the Republican candidates here, they all support the war. They all support the president. They all supported the escalation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to urge the Congress to think twice before thrusting this nation into a war without merit. Our politics is now about the answer to one briefly worded question. Mr. Bush has failed. Mr. Warner has failed. Mr. Reid has failed. So, who among us will stop this war? Hi, I'm Jill Hepker from Grinnell, Iowa. My question is, if you were president, what would be your strategy for ending the war in Iraq? Congressman Paul, what would it be? Just come home. We just marched in. We can just come home. And I don't know why we can't rally around with it, uh, around this very simple approach of saying, you know, we all take the same oath of office to obey the Constitution. We got ourselves into trouble because we disobey the Constitution. We could get back on track by merely living up to our oath of office.
have allowed too much power to gravitate to the executive branch, and the Congress won't live up to their responsibility. is to be the policeman of the world, you lose liberty. And if the goal is to promote liberty, you can unify all segments. The, uh, the freedom message uh, brings us together. It doesn't divide us. I believe that when we overdo our military uh, aggressiveness, what it does, it actually weakens our national defense. I mean, we stood up to the Soviets. They had 40,000 nuclear weapons. Now we're fretting day in and day night about third world countries that have no army, navy, or air force, and we're getting ready to go to war. We can achieve much more in peace than we could ever achieve in these needless, unconstitutional, undeclared wars. I would restore openness to government. I do not think in this country we should have secrecy of government. The purpose of government is to provide privacy for the people. I would never use executive privilege to deny information to the Congress. Get off your couches, people. This is our country.